In this next section, we're going to create prompts and parameters. I'll start off creating my report with the report wizard. And I will select the Pentaho template. I've already modified this template to include other queries I need for this example. The query we will be using is sales data query. I'm going to edit that query to show you the syntax. And please take note of the in clause and the values. I also have a distinct plants query and a distinct regions query. These are queries that I'm going to use to drive my parameter boxes. For the report, I'll select sales data query and then very easily select my columns. And I'll group by region. And we'll just add some formatting for the header and the cost and sales. Okay, if I preview my report, it is as such. Top level region, plant, cost, and sales. To begin adding the parameter, I go under the Data tab to Parameters, right-click and add parameter. Here's where I provide the parameter name. In this case, it will be called region underscore parm. And the label for the prompt interface will say provide region input. And just for example, we'll start off with a simple text box. And this will be a value type string, and we'll provide a default value of east. So now that the parameter and the prompt are created, they will be displayed in the interface as such, but the query is not driven by it yet. The next step is to edit the data set. And the data set you want to edit is the query that drives the reports in the columns. So in this case, where we started out with the region parm, what we're going to do is replace this with the substitutable parameterized syntax, dollar sign, curly brace, parameter name. When I click OK, you can see the auto update on the report now respects east. If I type in west, we get the appropriate report. What we're going to do next is edit that parameter. And instead of a text box, we'll make it a drop down. When you select drop down, you must provide a query. And a query can be a dynamic SQL statement that pulls back distinct values from a lookup table. It could be a table that you define in the data sources if you want it to be static. So to give you an example of that, we'll select table. And we'll just call this static query. Now take note of the columns. This is going to be what populates the drop-down list. The ID section is the actual value that gets passed to the query. And the value column is the actual display name. So for this, we'll call that East. And for value, we'll display Eastern. And then here's where you can start adding rows and columns, very similar to like what I showed you earlier, but we're going to use this to drive that drop-down list. So we'll call that one West and Western. OK, and I'll just do two to give you an example. So now we have the table data source. And you can see from the drop-down list, I can select Static Query. And then you can choose the ID and the value. Keep in mind the ID is the actual value that gets passed to the query. And the value is the actual display value. Uh, this might change when we go GA with the release. Um, so these headers might change depending, but keep in mind the order and the structure. So clicking OK now gives me this drop down box with Eastern and Western. So there's Eastern, and there's Western. What I'm going to do next is go back in, and instead of making a static query, I have a distinct regions query. And by expanding my JDBC data sources, 
you can see distinct regions. And I'm able to edit that. And you can see it says select distinct regions from CComp. What this provides is the ability to now populate this dropdown dynamically from a lookup table or database. Okay, continuing along, what we're going to do now is now make the dropdown into a multi value list using that same query. Now keep in mind the sales data query had an in clause. You can use the in syntax in a SQL specific dialect to do multiple selections on where conditions. So for the multi value list, we'll select distinct regions. Select auto update. And now you can see we can select multiple items and the report reflects appropriately. What I want to do next is create another parameter and another prompt for plant. And I'm going to do that by selecting parameters, add parameter, and we're going to call this plant parm. For the label, provide plant input. Type will be a drop down, and query will be distinct plants. So when I click OK, you can see that we now have a drop down for the plants. But once again, this is not tied in to the particular query. So what I want to do next is edit the sales data query and then add the parameterized syntax, which is dollar curly base, the name of the parm, in this case plant parm, curly brace, and click OK. Now keep in mind you're going to get no data available because we are selecting invalid combinations. And there's a possibility that might happen. So for example, we know Los Angeles is in north and west, but Los Angeles is not in the eastern plant. So you can see how we get no data available. So what we need to do is create a cascading prompt. And cascading prompts basically will allow the appropriate plant values to be displayed to corresponding region values. So the way we're going to do that is by editing the parameters and editing the queries. So let me explain. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the prompt for plant parm. And we're going to make that prompt from a drop down into a multi selection or multi value list. And then what we're going to also do is we're going to edit the distinct plants query. And here is where we have the hard coded regions. We're going to default to the substitution, dollar sign, curly brace, and the region parameter, which is region underscore parm. Now that'll reset our list. We can select our distinct plants. We can select the default value if we wish. But let's click OK. And now we have a multi selection list box that now represents values that are valid with the previous selection. So there's north, east, south, and west. So if we deselect north and we deselect east, and basically you get the picture on that now. So if I just wanted to look at south and Dallas, or I wanted to look at west and include Los Angeles and Seattle, I get that corresponding information. So that's basically how you create a cascading prompt. It's fairly simple. If I go back and edit the plant parm, instead of making a multi-value list, 
you can see there are other items such as checkboxes, multi-selection buttons, date pickers, etc. Let's use a multi-selection button. And here we'll have dynamic buttons displayed based on the previous selections. And then here you could either select or depress, turn on auto update, and the report will update accordingly. So let's publish this to the Pentaho BI server. And let's see how the parameterization is represented when viewed over the HTML viewer. I want to call this my second RDW report and provide the published password. And let's launch it now. Put on our credentials. And now you will see we have the multi-selection list box and the multi-selection buttons.